So this is just a short video just to explain the use of the dance cards and how we created some of them. Um, it's to support my GDC talk because I plan on releasing that talk later on in the year but this is just to kind of give you a small taste of, of how we created some of those moves. So the first dance card we created was very simple and it meant that we could then give this dance card to any potential actors and then say use this and go from A to B and go through these things, learn this routine. So I'll talk you through this particular dance card. So it involved me running one way, then turning over my left shoulder, then this way then I'll be turning over my right shoulder. Then what I'm gonna do now is turn left and get to a point where I stop. I then go back left, I think, 45 degrees. And then here I go right 45 degrees. Then I go right 90 degrees. And then here I'll be going back of my right shoulder 45 degrees. Then that is left 45 degrees. And then there I come to the end of all the transitions, the main transitions, and what I'm doing here is just making sure I'm getting a nice constant jog. We found that if we didn't do this then every animation would look like it was either accelerating or decelerating. So what would happen is after the transition then the system would pick this up. Then what I would do is I'd want to kind of do one for fun. And the one for fun would involve me doing everything that was against everything I thought was going to happen. So instead of just kind of pivoting one way then I would reverse pivot like you see there. Now it turned out that this would be really good for um, responsiveness because I was actually pivoting on the foot that you wouldn't normally pivot on. Um, so say for example if you were going right, um, normally what you do is you push off on your left foot to go right. What was happening is I was pivoting on my right foot so what was happening is when and then you press right, then what would happen is you would do this spin move. So it ended up looking really, really cool and really organic. And that would have been very, very hard to do in a, in a state machine. Not impossible, but it would have been extremely difficult to make look that organic. This then turned into um, simple snaking, as we called it at the time. And the idea was it was just to show the weight transfer from left to right when you were going forward and you were pushing on the stick. So now this is where it gets quite interesting. We tried marking things on the floor, but we found that the actors would just look on the floor. So what we had here is we had two members of the team, um, one tie a rope around the, the, the torso of someone else, and then they would pull in slightly, meaning that the circles would be nice and um, even. We got some really good curves from this as well. And, and then what would happen is uh, Mike he would then let the slack out. I mean, it looks a little bit like Bronco's being treated like a horse here, I suppose. <laughs> but he'd let slack out, and then he'd pull it back in, and this would create these really nice, even circles. And we actually put these in, and these look really, really good. We found, we, we found this was actually the best way to create circles completely. If there's other ways, then please let me know. But this was something that we found really good. And you can see here when he accelerates, you can see the lean in. And it starts to look really, really good. <laughs> and then Mike moves out of the way. That's pretty good. I was, I was quite happy with that at the time. Brings me to what motion matching actually is, albeit a very, very high level description of it. So we describe a small amount of characteristics on what we want the character to do over a certain amount of time. 